Hey everyone and welcome back to Elden Ring. So this episode we're pretty much just going to get into things. Um, we want to go right up here. So we'll put a marker there. So this will be our first cave. Um, if you want, go into your equipment. I'm going to shuffle these around. I don't really use the bow that often. Chuck on a torch. Um, cave spin can be kind of dark, and for the moment we don't have the lantern, so yeah, we'll use the torch. Anywho, just jump around. It's pretty much north ish of um, the Church of Bella. Now, where is the entrance? Okay, so if you see this campfire here, and this dude just hanging out around it. The entrance is right next to him. So, this is pretty much the easiest cave you're going to face. Which is why I chose to do it first. Um, in previous times trying to record this and stuff like that, I've gone to a cave that's just next door to this and uh, it kicked my booty. And mainly because my character wasn't leveled and didn't have good equipment. So, you know, we'll, we'll make sure to get that before we carry on. Anyways, coming over to the left, we have a crafting material called cave moss. A lot of these crafting materials I'm just going to pick up, I'm not really going to care about. Uh, but they do have their uses. Alright, we're going to follow this path. Straight ahead is a dog. I mean, you can hold your shield up if you want to. Um, great thing about uh, combat in this game, so you've got your running attack, you've got your back backstep attack. Oop. Oh my lord, I'm gonna die to a wolf. So this is an alpha wolf. They can take a lot more hits than their, uh, than their friends. Uh, so you have a rolling attack. Yeah, just little things like that, and pretty s not pretty soon, later on, we'll pick up two weapons of the same type and we'll be able to dual weed. Dual, dual wield. Power stance, pretty much. Right, I'm talking too much. Kill the wolf, grab the crackpot. Come down here. A plunge attack is just when you hit the heavy in the air. Alright, all these little silver fireflies are all crafting ingredients. Pick up the golden rune one. Uh, so that's just a low level currency item, I guess. And then coming on through here, we have the boss. Um, now, because my character is so little leveled at the moment, and, um, and I don't have that much health, I'm going to put on these uh, lone wolf ashes. So these are your summons, pretty much. You can just summon anything you want to come into the fight with you, uh, as long as you have their ashes. And the sign on the left there, the little gravestone, that means you can summon. So we'll just, for the most part, they're just a good distraction for the boss. Oh crap, and you don't need a, a torch in here because it's light enough. I'm trying to use my uh, FP, but I keep forgetting that um, I had a shield on. So, Beastman of Fire and Razula. Azula, oh my god, that was just all mixed into one. Generally, you can go straight back and uh, rest to get your flasks back. I just wanted to be cheeky and see if I could beat him with no flasks. Oh my god, and I almost didn't. Get him, wolves, get him! Yeah. And we, oh my god, with like one HP left. How much do we have left? Three. We have three HP left. <laughs> we got a fire, fire Drake Talisman, which will just uh, negate fire damage to an extent. Uh, maybe boost fire resistance would probably be a better way of putting it. Um, okay, so from here, we want to go to Gatefront Bruins. Click on that and that's your fast travel. I'm not going to go too in-depth with the map, but it should be pretty self-explanatory for any gamer. Um, okay, and we're just going to get on our horse and run straight up here. Now, ignore everything, grab the item if you want, but don't stop to get it. It's just a lump of flesh. 
Uh, reason why we're running is because a troll just dropped on us. Those horns will summon everyone to your position or his position, so it'll just aggro everyone and they'll come raining down on you. Here's a seed. Um, so you always want to kill the one with the horn first, if you can figure out who that is. And apparently it rains wolves. We're just going to ignore those. Come to the grace. And once we rest... Right. Once we rest... There we go, thank you. Um, all the enemies will go away. Right, so up here we have a stored stone, uh, sword stone key. Wow, I cannot speak today. Then we have an NPC over here. She's going to give us a jellyfish summon. And just exhaust her dialogue. There we go, cool. So Jellyfish Summon is my man. He is so tanky. It's probably the only other one that I really level up to the max. Um, right, from here we want to go to War Master's Shack, which is about here. So just follow the road east. Uh, there should be some fire arrows and like two enemies. You just want to ignore the enemies. We're going to largely be ignoring most of the things until we get a better weapon. So pick up the fire arrows as you cruise past them. And then we have this dude here. De-aggro the enemies. Is it Bernal or something like that? Uh, Bernal it is, okay. So the one and only skill that I want to purchase from him right now is no skill. Reason being is that I'm going to pick up a shield and I'm going to take parry off it. This is an Ash of War and we can do that with Ash of Wars. So that's all I want. I want a way better shield than what I've got. I'm going to get it. Uh, from here we want to go grab that shield. So that's on the eastern road through a camp. Uh, now the main thing here is that you just want to be quick. If you die, it's no biggie, the grace is right behind us. So to our left, we've got a chest. Alright, and then you just want to roll on out, get on your horse. Rolling has good iframes, getting on your horse has good iframes. Uh, opening chests has iframes of some description. Okay, and coming over here we have a Grace. Just going to ignore that NPC for now. Uh, gonna rest. Alright, and come on through here. Now this is a pumpkin head. If you want his helmet, you can kill him over and over again. Uh, he respawns, a lot of them don't. Grab the smithing stone in your passing. Uh, now there's a merchant to our right. He, we don't really want to pick anything up from him at the moment. Um, but he does so... Cookbooks are a thing. Like, they expand your crafting repertoire, I guess. Actually, you know what, let's buy that now so we don't need to come back later. Um, if you don't have enough runes to buy that or whatever, they come up with a little icon. Uh, my icon's in the way at the moment, but it'll be the same as like this one here. This is uh, Alexander the Warrior Jar. We haven't been to see him yet, but we will much later on. Alright, come over here to the graveyard, and we'll see our first NPC called D. Alright, so he's saying the um, the village here is haunted by, what is it, Tibia Marina, um, who isn't all that difficult to fight. In fact, we're going to kill him now. Uh, 
Uh, in fact, I just want to see, I'm pretty sure there's a summon sign for D around here somewhere. Where are we? Uh, let's go. Maybe not. That's fine, we don't need a summon sign. Uh, quite honestly, your jellyfish should do work here. But um, this will also, this will get us a, a death root as well as a really good summon that I'm going to use for probably like the first half of the game. So to be a marina, this guy teleports. He summons skeletons. Two charge teddies, and he's going to go into that. I don't know where his animation spot is to get him on the critical, but that is fine. When you see this bullcrap start to happen, just back away, honestly. All oh, right, uh, stupid shield. Now we'll be setting up that shield later on, probably next episode. But for the moment, just stick with what we've got. Uh, if you want to summon your jellyfish, go right ahead. It's awesome. See, this thing will kill its own skeletons. Uh, I believe this should get a bleed proc as well. No biggie because we have almost killed it. Alright, and down go the skeletons with it. So we should get the uh, skeletal militiamen as well as a death root. Now death root doesn't sound like much but it's actually quite a valuable item. You trade it for uh, miracles and also a small I'm gonna say quest line. Uh, anyways grab the mushroom I think there's some smithing stones around here somewhere. Maybe not that's fine. I'm just running around in circles trying to find little shinies. Okay, that's enough for this area. So from here you want to come south. And then once you hit this sort of stumpy thing, turn left. Once you see all the turtles, we now have a stone sword gate. So we'll use the key for that. We picked that up at the um, Storm Hill Shack by the lady where we picked up the jellyfish. Coming on through here, you've got a whole bunch of turtles. This is one of the few bottom areas where, like, the enemies are friendly. Well, they're not enemies, but the things are friendly. Come through here and you'll get your first talisman, the green turtle talisman. Now, if you're familiar with Dark Souls, uh, you'll know this is the Chloranthia Ring. Just raises uh, the time. It speeds up the time that your stamina takes to recover. There, yeah, that wasn't so hard. Um, anyways, from here we want to go uh, to be a man of green turtle south of cemetery of Rungalong for winter. Oh, okay, no. So there's a cemetery somewhere. So, okay, this is a crimson scarab. If you kill these, see how we're at one for our health flasks. It'll give you a couple back. So kind of helpful if you just want to top, top up sort of thing. Uh, blue ones are for Cerulean, so if you need more FP, you can just use those. Um, they're not everywhere, but they are quite prominent. Um, so we want to come over here. Jump over here, and jump over here. Now these cemeteries... You'll see me hit them now and then, you know, you can just pick up little low-level runes. Good for getting that sort of last little oomph that you need for the uh, the level that you want or something you want to buy or, you know. Grab that, grab that. Uh, from here we want to see, look out for a wind tunnel. Now wind tunnels, they'll help your horse jump like huge distances up. But if you jump into them, they'll actually break your fall as well. So that's a wind tunnel over there. We just want to 
Gravity is sort of a weird thing in this game. It'll either really badly hurt you or not at all. So you just want to go into here and see we have a scarab just over here. This will give us an Ash of War called Sacred Blade. Oops. All right, now that is holy magic attached to that. So that will come in handy for dead things like skeletons and stuff like that. Um, anyways, grabbed uh, that. We need to come into this building here. This is the third church of America. Hit the grace. Um, so you can sort of see, like, I mean, the map fragment is right there. We'll be going for that eventually. But we've come all the way at Saints Bridge. That was the bridge. There's the merchant. Uh, summon Water Village. Down and down we came. This is probably one of the more crucial items in the game. It's the Wanderous Physic Flask. You can just add, it's like a one-shot flask that you can add different effects to. It's quite cool. Sacred Tears will add, the, add to the potency of your healing. Uh, so if we add one now, it'll come uh, flask plus one, which is awesome. Uh, what do you want? Do follow the path south for the mistwood map fragment, howling, and then see you for river grace. Okay, sweet. So, actually should rest. Um, if you want to dismount off your horse properly or quickly, it's uh, just tap the L3. So follow path south, and yeah, we're just heading straight for this thing, um, as well as uh, howling, then the earth tree, and a different thing. Okay, sweet. Go over the ruins. Now eventually we're going to come across some Howling, that's just going to be an NPC, we can't interact with him now, but probably next episode we will. Depending on how long we've got now, oh maybe this episode. Uh, anyways, <clears throat> ignore all the bears here. Pick up your Rune Fragment, your Rune Fragment, your Map Fragment. These are going to be always on these little pillars here. There's a Rune Bear, we'll quickly grab that cookbook. All right, and you want to come along and just start listening for some howling. Uh, so you want to follow the road to about there. All right, so Blyde is up there. We can't interact with him now because we don't have the right emote. That is fine. What you want to do is come straight east. And you should, should see a big giant tree. What we're looking for is this right here. Now this will add a spike crack tier and a green, green spill crystal tier. That'll add a, a little charge to our wondrous physic if we so choose to put them in. Um, now directly west is a ash of war scarab. And I can't quite remember what that gets us. I think it gets us some um, like slam or something like that. Come back here, you little bastard. Oh my god, just die. There we go, ground slam. Uh, that is really good actually. It carried me through pretty much most of my first playthrough because I didn't know how to play this game very well. Um, Anywho, coming back shouldn't have taken us that long to do do that. Uh, just come all the way back to the tree here. And what we're going to do, save us picking it up way later, is we are going to jump into this building here. And take this all the way down. Now this is going to be yet another area that we visit way, way later on. Uh, it's a long ass ladder, we'll just grab the grace and warp out. Um, so, alright, so this episode we're going for the uh, Bloodhound Fang, which is going to be 
the weapon that pretty much carries us through the first half of the game, if not most of the game. It's always going to be my, my fallback on weapon anyways. Uh, I probably jam-packed a whole lot of information into a couple of episodes. I'll explain things as we go along so it's less confusing. Alright, and we have Grace. Oh, please don't die. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to the slow health. Alright, rest at that. And then from here, what we want to do, you will notice the map is all dark. Uh, click R3. And that'll just mean that, well, that's the underground, which we don't have a map for at the moment, so that's fine. This is the above ground. We want to go all the way back to the Church of Ella. Once we talk to Kale, uh, he will give us an emote called Finger Snap, which we can then use to talk to Blyde. Uh, ask about the howling in this wood. Alright, Finger Snap. And while we've got the runes, we may as well purchase these cookbooks because I never remember to come back to this dude. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, from here, whoop all the way back to the third church of America, and then we're just going to set a marker at the Misswood runes, and we'll go talk to Blade as well as um, pick up a... Is it an axe talisman? I think it's an axe talisman. Um, so horse combat, kind of cool. It's it's better in this game than it is in most games. I still don't really like it though. Um, like you can hold your heavy attack on the right side to do a right swing, hold it on the left side to do a sweep. Otherwise, R1 for right, L1 for left. Your right hand weapon is going to be your only weapon that you use. Um, unless somehow you want to change it to a shield, where you just whack people with a shield. Oh, beast bone, cool. If you see little items on the ground that I run past, just pick them up. No harm in it. Alright, so we're going to come all the way over here, and this is the little crevice that we want to talk to Blight in. If you want to know if you're being followed or not, just try to open up your map. That sign there, that sound, means that I cannot. But nothing's following me now, I should be fine. Okay, right, come over to gestures, hit switch, and we will change that for finger snap. Here's Blyde. Alright, Exhausters dialogue. God, you're so tall. Um, and from here, how's our time? Ah, oh, yep, yeah, sweet. From here, we're just going to head straight south. Going to pick up another grace, which we'll be tackling this area a bit later. It'll just save us plenty of time. Uh, to our left is another merchant. Let's go visit him. Once you see the summon sign with all the, uh, the gold pouring out of it, come on up here. Uh, he has two cookbooks which I want to get. Oh my god, my dog is snoring so hard right now. <laughs> Alright. So we've got a lot that we can craft already. This is nothing compared to the full result. And I mean, you don't have to spend the souls on them, but like this is a game where you don't have to farm. Um, by the end game, you should be getting runes that just boost you up to what level? I think we get to like level 200, maybe 250 by the end of the game. Um, so around about here, the path sort of splits off. You want to come over to the right hand side. Grab the grace. Uh, in fact, I'm actually going to grab another seed. So we're going to run all the way up here. Just run in and out. We're not going to do anything else.
All right, there's a seed. This area is for a quest that we're going to tackle later on, plus it has a pretty crucial item in it. Uh, not mandatory, but crucial. All right, and now we can warp. So from here, what we want to do is we actually want to go here. So if you follow this all along, we should just be able to jump up straight away. So let's say southwest. Pretty sure there's a wind tunnel over here. I could be lying. Let's have a look. Uh, it's more in the forest area. So let's jump up here. I think there's a cemetery down there actually that I missed. There is. Oh well, that's fine. And just follow this cliff face for the wind tunnel. And jump up. Alright, now where's our marker? Did we even set one? We didn't. Um, so there should be a grace about here, just to the right or to the east of the bottom of the lake. So we'll try for there. Cemetery, so we'll grab some runes. See, now if we didn't pick up that first cemetery, I wouldn't have been able to buy those um, cookbooks. Just a big collector when it comes to those. I don't know what it is. I barely even use the crafting kit as it is. It's just, you know, the one time. Uh, so, from here, we are looking for a mound of grass. Uh, I believe this is it over here. Nope, it is not. Uh, I know there's a grace over here somewhere. You just got to look for the... It's hard because it's evening. You've got to look for the uh, golden lights. Oh, over here. So you can sort of see off in the distance like there's these little golden fairy light things popping towards it. Alright, now the whole purpose in talking to Blythe was that he's going to be a summon in this fight. He's looking for this dude. We want this dude's weapon. We can help each other out. Uh, you just want to come all the way up here. This is an, um, an Ever Jail. Ever Jail? Ever Gal? Uh, I'm not even sure. It's pretty much just like an instant boss fight. Awesome. Alright, so you want to come on in and to the right here we have Blade's Golden Summon sign. Or Blide, Blade, whatever. Summon them up. Uh, this, none of these guys start appearing until you walk closer to them. So he's just going to hang out. Darrowell. Rotting in a cell is no true justice. No. This is where it ends for you. Okay, and um, we're going to let Blyde do most of the work on this fight. Mainly because we're severely underleveled. And this guy can pack a huge punch. Couple attacks if you want, and then just roll on out. Uh-oh. If you die at this point, he should actually kill him anyways, so you'll get his weapon <laughs> upon death. Uh, if you die in here, your souls or your runes just end up on the outside of this battlefield anyway, so it's fine. You can just go straight to them. Anyways, we got the sword we wanted, so that is the main thing. Okay, and first up, what you want to do is talk to Blyde here. He will give us an upgrade map. It's the Somber Stone. So this is the other kind of smithing stone I was talking about now. Uh, the difference between, say, the Uchigatana and the Bloodhound's Fang. The Uchigatana, you can change your Ash of Wars with. Um, same with the bow. Same with... Not sure about the torch, actually, but, yeah, little things like that. Um, Bloodhound Fang is a unique weapon, so you cannot change the Ash of War on it. Now, you'll see Bloodhound's Finesse is up there. It costs uh, something inaccurate at the moment because we don't have the stats to use it. But... 
that's pretty much the self-explanatory, really. Um, anyways, from here we are going to go to uh, the Third Church of America. And this is where we're going to wrap up. Just over 30 minutes, nice. Uh, next episode we're going to be getting the runes to actually use that weapon. Um, yeah, we'll be going a bit more over here. Probably we shouldn't really be over there because enemies are going to kill us straight away, but we can run past them all. It's no problem. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. I will see you here next time.